space world, they worship machinery. They do the sign of the V8. The cars were a metaphor for power. Forget about hunkering down in the bunker. Come the end of the world, steal a V8, steal a gun. You're going to last a little longer. We decided to shoot the film old school with real vehicles and real people. This is a story that's in constant movement. There's a huge design element here. The vehicles look very distinguished and different from one another. Given the vicissitudes of rolling, crashing, smashing, setting fire, we've required to build 130 vehicles all up. The Interceptor. The original Mad Max car, 1972-73, XB Ford Coupe, known and loved throughout the world. Max drives the Interceptor from the very first move. In this case, the beginning, as we say in Australia, it was completely clapped out. Max's car is basically a metaphor for Max. It's all he has. He searches the wasteland to hold it together. For every hero, there's a villain. For every XB Interceptor, there's the Giga Horse. The vehicles are almost like an extension of the characters. And because this is a movie on wheels, the Giga Horse is the throne. It has to be the biggest vehicle. In a world where there's barely one of anything, to show you had power, he's the man who's got two of everything. So a pair of 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Villes. It's two V8 engines locked together into one shaft. It seriously rocks. When you hear that thing come through. The War Rig is probably, after the human characters, the next most important character. It's the vehicle in which they flee across the wasteland. It's ultimately our major set. Apart from the actors, this is the thing we're most going to be looking at in the movie. So let's make it as beautiful in its own way as best we can. Every armada has a little boy on a fife and drum. Enter the doof wagon. Going into battle, if you've got a great armada of vehicles, all with big loud engines, no one's going to hear a bugle or a bagpipe. So we went for the flamethrower guitar. Then you need massive speakers. And at the back of it, you put your taco drummers. So it's kind of one big bugle. And the Doof Warrior plays the flamethrowing double neck guitar and keeps the beat of the Armada. So feel the rumble, and then you see trucks full of these war boys flying past. Everyone's hyped up. A lot of it's not acting. I got chills completely to shooting that stuff. We basically tried to build the vehicles the way that it would have been done in the apocalypse. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and there's not enough dog to go around, so... Really, at the end of the world, it's all about power. 